and welcome back for your daily inspiration. I am Pastor Kerry, pastor of Emerging Generations here at New Birth, and I am so honored to have you. Listen, if you are visiting for the first time, welcome, and if you are coming back, if this is your third or fourth time, I am so glad that you are enjoying these daily inspirations, and I pray that they are a blessing to you. Listen, today, I got a special treat for y'all because you know normally I do my daily inspirations alone, but I have my brother with me. You all know him as Pastor Kervance Ross, the pastor of internet and innovation here at New Birth. Brother, what up? I'm so glad to have you. I'm honored to be here. You know how I feel about you and the, the fact that I get a chance to do this with you. I'm more than excited. Listen, we are going to have so much fun today. We want to make sure, though, that you are staying connected with us. You can follow me on Instagram at Ms. Carrie Baby. And you can follow me on every platform, Instagram, Facebook, wherever you are, and I am Curvance Ross. Listen, we also want to make sure, as always, you will hear me say it every week, we want you to stay connected with the ministry and everything that we're doing at New Birth. As you know, the vision that Dr. Bryant has for it is so vast. We have some going on all the time. Every day of the week. Yes, and so you can download the New Birth app if you have not done that. Of course, you can always follow us on New Birth, at newbirth.org, and everything we do is hashtag New Birth now. So listen, brother, today I want us to talk a little bit about in our daily devotional. I want to talk about divine disruptions and detours. <laughs> you think we got, we, we only got 15 minutes, brother. I think we're going to need to extend this to 30 <laughs> minutes of daily inspiration. This, right. This might need to be a part two, but I want to talk about divine disruptions and detours. And I say that because I recently posted a quote on social media um, and I said, 2020 need to stop tripping. <laughs> Did, did you see it? I, saw it? I said 2020 needs to stop tripping. I have plans. I got plans for you 2020. You know, like most of you, you know, I was being lighthearted when I said it, but I was really being serious when I said it. You know, if you're like me, you started off this year, you had plans that you wanted to see happen. I was so happy to leave 2019. Not that it was an awful year, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But I think it was one of those years where I kept receiving profit after prophecy but I had not seen the full manifestation mm. of it yet and so I was excited to come into 2020 because I believed seriously that this would be a year of total manifestation yeah. and so in January you know we hit the ground running together. listen together <laughs> right we hit the ground running there were some things that I mapped out hear me say I mapped out some things I planned to do I had some expectations you know I had my goal together I had done my vision board mm -hmm. and then here we are with COVID-19 mm. and it's like you start looking around you and you're like how in the world am I here because I had a plan yeah. there are some things I wanted yeah. to do yeah. and what I realized is that you can be in the midst of a thing and God will say um, I have a different direction that I want you to go into are, are you familiar with that yeah, it is. I, I call him uh, the God of our divine interruption. Oh, gosh. Uh, simply because God will allow you to go a certain place, mm -hmm. a certain point, mm -hmm. and to a certain progression state. Yes. And then say, thank you, now follow me. Oh, my goodness. And it allows us to be in a position to realize that we're free moral agents. Yes. But we serve a purposeful and directive God. Yes. That once we put it in his hands, he will put things in our place mm -hmm. that will force us to feel like we've been interrupted. Mm. And more of it is not just an interruption. Yeah. It's inspiration yeah. for his direction and power to flow in our lives. Absolutely. And sometimes those interruptions are so necessary because it gets stuff out of the way. Absolutely. And it leans the world in our direction. Oh my gosh. Oh my God. Leans the world in our direction. I love that because I think oftentimes we don't play 
plan for a disruption. You know, we plan in most areas of our life because we feel like there is a level of control that mm -hmm. we can have. But this is the one thing that has impacted the world mm -hmm. where we don't necessarily have any control. We didn't have any control on when it started and we sure enough don't have any control on when it ends. I was talking to my mother about it today and she said, I'm so tired of people talking about they're ready for this to be over. She said, it's going to be over when the Lord says it's over. Yeah. And that is absolutely the truth. And so it's understanding that a disturbance can come, but based upon how you are viewing it, mm -hmm. it can either be for your benefit or, you know, it can take you in another direction. That's the beauty of the passage in the Bible where it talks about all things work together. Oh, my goodness. The good of those who love the Lord and are the called yes. to his purpose. Yes. I think it's important for us to realize that it is working together whether it's good or bad. Come on here. And it only happens if we see it as an intersection mm. and not just an interruption. Mm -hmm. Because there are some moments in life where the good stuff needed bad stuff. To oh my goodness. Oh life. my goodness. Because it set off a balance. It set off a necessity. Yes. If even in working out if I don't have the negatives in the weight lift, come on here. I don't develop the strength and the muscle. That's it's right. The negative movement That's right. that gives me the positive power. Yes. And those interruptions are divinely set up so that we can have strength enough for what we pray for mm, and mm. what we plan for. Oh my goodness. So I think these interruptions are good for us. We just got to change how we look at it. Absolutely. No, I, I absolutely agree with you. When I was, you know, praying about this in terms of what I wanted to share with you this week, you know, the Lord was talking to me about Saul. Mm. When he, Saul of Tarsus, this is before he came, Paul, became mm. Paul, when he was on the road to Damascus yeah. and he had an experience. And if you get a chance to go read Acts 9, and I want you to really go and spend some time with it because it'll bless you. The challenge with us is when we've heard a story before, we don't think that we need to go back to the text. But can I tell you that the Lord gives fresh revelation even in a text that you have read 10,000 times before because he will make sure that it is applicable for what you need right now today. And so he sent me to Acts 9 and I said, well, Father, I didn't already read this story before, but I want to share it with you because Saul at this time was a persecutor of the church, right? Saul had gone, really, he had gone to the priests and had decided to get some warrants because that's really what he got. He got some warrants and he began to, he was on his way to Damascus to take these warrants mm -hmm. to really use them to capture believers and persecute them. He had a plan. He had a path. He had things that he was planning to do, albeit they were negative. The point was there was a direction that he was planning to go into. And so on his ro on his way to Damascus, he had an experience with the father that I'm sure he would have never planned for. He would have never anticipated. And that experience blinded him. Th this is so good. It's just so good. The experience blinded him and it blinded him to the point that he needed to have assistance in getting to the next space and you got to read it on your own because we don't have time but when he got to the when he got to the space that he was at before Ananias came to yeah. get him the Bible talks about how he was alone and the only thing that he could do was pray mm. isn't it something how the Lord will disrupt the path that you are going into only to then put you in a place where you are in isolation and the only thing you can do is pray so that the only voice that you can hear is his the amazing thing about ah! this moment is Paul, at this time being Saul, yes. is operating as Osama bin Laden. Mm. And when he gets interrupted, isolated, and inspired, Come he, on. he becomes Billy Graham. Oh my goodness. It is a moment where God shifts his purpose. Yeah changes his plan yes and creates a platform that allows us to talk about him for the rest of our lives. the rest of our lives but if he doesn't get blinded come on here isolated come on here and get interrogated come on here you will find him going down a road that will shorten mm. the ability for him to reach his destiny mm. and sometimes god does these moments these yes. divine yes. interruptions 
so that we don't shorten our own destiny. Oh my goodness. He changes our name so that the name we had yes. can be forgotten. Yes. And the name he gives us can be remembered. Yes. And it's all for his glory. And if we don't allow the mm. interruption Come on. to serve as moments of inspiration, yes. influence, yes. and insightfulness. Yes. It will be minimized and we got to now start thanking God as the old people say, I thank him for my mountains. Come on. I thank him for my valleys. Come on. I thank him for all that yes. he brought me through. Yes. The interruptions are the things that I can look back and say, God, yes. I thank you. Absolutely. And we're grateful for Absolutely. Abs uh, listen, I'll run, I'll run around this table, y'all. I will run around this table right now. <laughs> I am so blessed because it's such a beautiful story and it's so applicable to right now yeah. you know I read a post where people you know have been saying that if you don't come out of this quarantine with a new business if you don't come out with a new strategy if you don't come out with a multimillionaire, then you always had time but you wasted time and I saw someone else post and I thought it was so refreshing mm -hmm. and I'm, I'm just kind of abbreviating what they yeah. said but they basically said listen th the world is in the middle of trauma if the only thing you did was come out of it alive and healthy and sound, you're okay. And what I love about wow. what I love about this particular text and the part of the story just that you mentioned, especially the isolation piece, mm -hmm. because it did, oh God, this is so good. It didn't say he developed a business plan. Now, we're not saying that you shouldn't. If that's what the Lord leads you to do, you should. It didn't say that he, that he you know, wrote 17 books. If you do, if that's what the Lord is telling you to do, that's great. What he said is that he prayed during this mm -hmm. time. The only thing he could do is pray. But what I believe is when you pray, the Father gives you the blueprint. This is how, listen, if you, if you spend enough time in isolation in prayer, this is why I say insulation, he can then deposit in you everything that you need when you get ready to come out. You mentioned that his name was changed. He was then able to walk into destiny and into yeah. purpose. That wouldn't have happened had he had not had a closet first. And sometimes we use the closet to try to make our own plans mm. rather than to get the information that the father has for us so that we are able to move forward. We will know him forever all because of this encounter. The funny thing is, even as a result of this, he doesn't just become a preacher. Yes. He becomes an entrepreneur. Yes. Because he's a tent maker. Actually. Yes. Yes. He's so good at his entrepreneurial marketplace yes. space that when he goes to preach and people don't want to pay him or can't pay him. Yes. He said, my tent business is bumping so good. Come on here. That I can minister freely because he's given me yeah. opportunities. Yeah. That only because of him creating a divine interruption. Mm -hmm. I was holding people's cloaks on one side. Oh my goodness. I was killing Christians on one side. Come on here. Now I'm giving people places to lay their head and an opportunity to find the person who's head of their lives. Oh my goodness. It's all because of that intersection of interruption yes. that shifted him yes. and the crisis allowed him to see Christ. Yes, absolutely. And I think that's the major moment in our lives. Yeah. When crisis forced us to see Christ our lives are changed forever. Yeah. And so the question becomes, you know, I want you to think about this as you go through the rest of your week. I definitely want you to go back and read that text. But the question becomes, what do you do when your plans are disrupted? <laughs> What do you do when there were things that you had planned, but then there com comes a divine disruption that takes you on a detour that you had not planned? What I know it does is it should strengthen your faith because here's the thing. God is not caught off guard. He knew, he knew very well what would happen. But what has to happen is, is your faith strengthened in that moment or do you collapse? Because this is a time that really speaks to what we believe. You can't just quote a scripture in these moments. Mm -hmm. You now have to live yes. by what you are saying you believe. And so I hope that today, wow. <laughs> I hope that today blessed you where you can understand that there might be a direction that you were going. If you started this year with your own plans, you heard me say at the beginning of the video that there were things I wanted to do. 
I had some stuff planned. But the truth is, if you do not submit those plans to the Father to be vetted, they mean nothing anyway. And you'll just be going around in a circle that does not produce anything. But he loves us so much, don't he? He loves us so much that he will see that even when we have our own plans, wow. hear me, that he will disrupt those plans so that he can get us to where we want to go. I have been telling people that God is more invested in your life than you are. Mm. Listen, he is more <laughs> invested in your life than you are. And you might have heard me say this before, but the Bible says that he, that he hovers over his word. He broods over his word to see to it that it comes to pass. He has a vested interest in his word mm. doing what it has to do in your life. And if that means a divine disruption, if that means a divine detour mm. to get you to change your name mm. and get you to a place of destiny, we got to be in a position where we say, Father, this didn't go the way I thought it was going to go, but I know that all things work together. Amen. You are in control. Your plans and your purpose prevails. I surrender my agenda to yours. Wow. <laughs> this is an interruption. I don't know if it's divine because I wish we could keep this going. I know. Thank you, Pastor. Thank sister, you. For allowing me to join you. I, I am blessed by being in this space. Absolutely. I'm glad that God interrupted wherever we were headed yes. to bring us together. Yes. And allowing New Birth to be a place yes. under the pastorate of Dr. Jamal oh, Harrison. Bryant absolutely. To allow us to yeah. interrupt people's lives yes. in the midst of an interruption that's going on. Yes. And help them possibly change their name. Yeah. See God. Yeah. And have a moment to go in another direction. Oh my goodness. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you. You know it's always a pleasure. The you pleasure know. Is all mine. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, we are so glad that you stopped by today. I pray that you heard something today that not only just blesses you, but we want you to be challenged. We want you to be inspired. We want you to leave differently after you experience your daily devotion so that your life changes. If that's the case, you know we always have room for you in our family. Every time. Listen, we want you, if you say, Pastor Carrie, Pastor Ross, we want to be a part of the New Birth family. You have two pastors here that welcome you with open arms. Our pastor, Dr. Jamal H. Bryant, welcomes you, and you have an opportunity to join right now at newbirth.org. You can join. Yep. And if you feel like this daily devotional blessed you in such a way that you want to sow a seed, then we want to provide an opportunity for them to do that as well. You can go to your smart device, whether you have an iPhone or God forbid you're having an Android, <laughs> I pray that there's a divine interruption that sends you another way. I want you to text NBGIVE to 77977, that's NBGIVE to 77977 and invest in soil that is reaping change yes. all over the world. Yes, we love you, we bless you, we are praying for you and we want you to have a wonderful week. Peace.